did you know? The cloud shell is a lot more powerful than you think. We're going to prove that today by playing some games in the Azure Cloud Shell. I'm here in my Azure Cloud Shell. I've got this set to Bash rather than PowerShell. What is the Azure Cloud Shell? Well, this Azure Cloud Shell is a fully fledged Linux environment. So if I run top, I've still got some top information down here and I can see what's running. But when I say fully fledged, it's not entirely fully fledged. Technically, this thing is a container running in the cloud, which means there are some limitations to it, even though I do have a lot of software in here that I might want to use. So if I want to do text editing, I can do buy. That's not a problem. And if I want to do something like uh, if I want to do Git, I have Git right here so I can pull things, push things, play about with things. Um, what I can also do is I can do Docker and I could use this to build, for example, Docker containers and deploy those to the container registry. That's not a problem. So if I go to cd slash uh, bin and do an ls, you'll be able to see all of the software that's installed in here. And there's quite a lot of it installed, but not everything that we want is installed. Sure, we've got Python. We can run a Python shell in here. We can run Python scripts in here. That's fine. Let's just do exit on that. We can even run PowerShell directly here within the bash with PWSH dropping up to a PowerShell 7 um, terminal inside my bash terminal. Uh, okay, fine. What about if I want to switch back to bash? Sure. If we just go to slash bin slash bash, run that and we're back in bash. Great. Right. What about if we want to install more stuff? Now, if you're used to Linux, you might use things like yum, or you might use things like apt-get. There's lots of other resources out there to pull down software. If I try and do that here, that's not gonna work. If I try to do this here, that's not gonna work either. Operation not permitted, you have to be root. So we could sudo, sudo yum. It's going to ask me for a password. The interesting thing is this password right here doesn't exist. So if I type anything in here, it will kick me straight out. That is because sudo is disabled on Azure's Cloud Shell, but that's not going to stop us from installing things. So just because sudo is disabled doesn't mean we can't actually come in here and install our own software. We've just got to do it the old fashioned way. So I'm going to pop over here to the GNU Free Software Foundation, the GNU software list. Thank you very much, Richard Stallman. If you don't know who Richard Stallman is, this guy is an elder of the internet. So down here, I've got lots and lots and lots of utilities and I've got lots of software that I might want to install. In fact, what I have got here is I've actually got chess. So if I want to play chess inside my terminal, I can go and download this and actually install it to run it. So let's go grab that. So what I want to do is grab this GNU chess. Let's pop in here, grab the actual source location of the GNU chess, copy link. And I want to take this CD back to my home, LS, and I'm gonna create a new directory here. I'm gonna do a MIGDIR games. And then I'm going to pop into games. I'm going to clear the screen out. And then I'm going to do a wget. And I'm going to go and grab that tar.gz file down here. Once I've grabbed that tar.gz file, just like any other Linux piece of software, what I need to do is extract it. tar-xvf. GNU chess. Let's go jump into the GNU chess directory here. CD GNU chess. LS, we have a lot of files inside here. What we need to do is this is a source code for GNU chess. We need to make it, build it, and compile this thing before this is actually going to run. To do that, what I'm going to need to do is run dot forward slash configure. Now you have to remember the dot forward slash, otherwise this is not going to work. This is going to configure the software package for us. Now my configuration is complete. I can type make, and this is going to build and compile this software for me. And it's going to dump it out to the SRC, the source directory folder, uh, where I can run this software. This is all taking place in a non-administrative user environment. This is taking place inside my Cloud Shell's home directory, which is stored inside the Cloud Shell drive. So now if I go into CDSRC, do an LS on here, we can go and run GNU chess. Dot forward slash GNU chess. We have chess. I mean, it doesn't look like much. We might want something a little bit better than this. Uh, let's actually go and run that again. 
Let's go run GNU chess dash G for a graphical interface. I need to make the first move. I'm white. Let's do an E4. There we go. How's about that? We have GNU chess running inside the environment and I'm playing against the computer. It takes a little bit longer than Stockfish to think about things though. If we type help, we have a list of the commands for GNU chess. One of the things we might actually want turned on here is coords so that we can actually see the coordinates for our board. Uh, so let's make another move here. Let's do uh, knight c3. There we go, my move is knight c3. The uh, black has made a move of knight f6 and I can continue to play chess here. This is awesome. I'm actually playing chess against a bot inside an Azure Cloud Shell. But what about if I want to play chess with someone else? Here's what we do. We're going to come back here into this Azure Cloud Shell and we're going to need something to communicate. We don't need SSH. What we want is good old Telnet. Telnet doesn't exist. Hey everybody, if you're enjoying this video, click the button down below, subscribe button with the bell icon. That'd be great. Comment any suggestions you've got. Thanks very much. Also, how do you get Telnet? Sudo apt get telnet and that isn't going to work we've got no sudo we need to get some telnet into here but where are we going to get telnet from let's just drop back a directory we're going to pop back into GNU again so here in the GNU archives we have this lovely little thing inet utils inet utils contains a telnet client all we have to do is download compile and run this thing so let's go do that right now what we're going to do is we're going to grab with wget that same um, package and we're now going to do a tar to extract it so we'll do a tar dash xvf and we'll do inet utils in here extract the whole thing clear this off go into that directory and we've got a bunch of things to play with let's do a dot forward slash configure just like last time we'll wait for that to configure all right, now we've got a configuration done. We can do a make to compile this software. Now our make is complete. Let's have a look at what we have. We have a directory called Telnet. So if we cd into Telnet and do another ls command down here, we can see we have the command of Telnet. So we can just run Telnet with a dot forward slash and we're now in Telnet. What can we do in Telnet? Well, it's not a protocol that we really need to use anymore, but there are a bunch of Telnet servers on the web. One of the things we can do here is do an O to open a connection and we'll go to a classic. We'll go to tal.blinkenlights.nl and we'll run that. And what have we got here? We have a Telnet version of Star Wars A New Hope. Someone a very long time ago took the time to convert the whole of Star Wars A New Hope into ASCII art and actually host that on a Telnet server for all the internet to connect to. How wonderful. But we're not here to watch Star Wars, we're here to play some games. In fact, we're here to go and connect to the free internet chess server. This thing is online, completely free. Uh, you can play this in a browser, you can connect it to many different pieces of software, but what you can also do is with the free internet chess server, we can connect to this thing with telnet open freechess.org so we're now connected to freechess.org we can register a new account or we can actually just connect as a guest so let's have a look at some of the help commands that we have inside here uh, we have the ability to accept certain games or to play certain games so if we do play 11 this is going to connect me to this random person's game and we can actually start to make a move so maybe i want to do again e4 I've moved E4, let's wait for this guy to move back. It's a blitz game, it's five minutes long, and he's moved back. Let's do a D4. It's a very silly move, but it doesn't matter, it's just proving a point. Wait for them to move back. And let's do Knight C3. Very, very bad chess game. But we are playing chess interactively in the cloud shell with a random person on the internet. A final thing we can connect to on Telnet is Telehack. Open Telehack.com. Now, Telehack.com is a simulation of the ARPANET back in the very, very early days of interconnected 
computers across the world. What we can do down here is we can actually uh, log into this system and we can go and connect to simulated servers. All right, let's try another command. Let's try Sudoku. We can play Sudoku inside our shell. If you want some more games here in Telehack, try typing Zrun. This gives you a list of interesting games that we can actually go and play. So maybe we want to do Zrun and let's run Zrun Vampire. And that's going to launch us into a multi-user dungeon down here. Maybe we want to run Zrun Golf. Let's go visit the driving range. So we have golf in a text adventure, should you really want that. This is what the early days of the internet looked like. This is what the 1970s looked like for people on the internet. So what's the point of all this? What's the point of running Telnet inside Cloud Shell and running chess inside Cloud Shell? It just shows that what you can do with this thing is actually a lot more powerful and a lot more flexible than people think. You might not be playing games inside the Cloud Shell um, other than just for an experiment, but what you might be able to do with your Cloud Shell is actually find Linux code and Linux scripts and make files and compile actual code, C code, inside our Cloud Shell environment for use in the future. Have a play with the Cloud Shell. Download some software. See what else is on GNU. See what you can actually do and what you can build with Cloud Shell. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.